Uh, the crowd response to Get Up's been amazing. It's one of those things, one of those songs, too, I started like with my, my ears off. So I'll take my ears out at the beginning of that song because I don't have to do anything until pre chorus. And uh, kind of hearing the reaction is good. And also, like, you, you'll see people, it's a very emotional song. So, like, seeing the people who cry and like, really get into it is, you know, it actually. Oddly enough, it put me in a really emotional spot the other night. Uh, I was thinking about my cousin who, who committed suicide and died. And, and, uh, I had my head on my guitar, and it was it was a rough one for me. So, I mean, sometimes the response is from me, too. The crowd response to Get Up has been better than I expected it to be. It's, it's, it's really... Uh, it's the unique thing when you're writing a song. People often ask you, hey, did you know what, that you were writing this thing when you wrote it? And the answer is always no. You, know, you don't ever have a... A clue. Usually, if you think something's going to be going to resonate and hit and be a hit, it, it ends up disappointing you. So, Get Up is one of those songs where I not like I didn't have high hopes for, it, but I didn't know what it would do. I had no idea. And, and um, live, there was one particular night, and I don't remember what city it was in on this tour, where we finished the song and I heard the crowd roar after we finished it, and it wasn't a single yet or anything, and. Uh, I had this thought, I'm like, this might have legs, man, this might be it, this, this, this could be a hit, it has potential, and it's really, either way it's resonating with people, and that's what's important for us. Singing the song back, um, being one of the writers of the song, and where the song came from, and the spirit of the song, because it's meant to be uplifting for all of the right reasons, because it's very, very authentic, and it's a very genuine song, to see the, to see the audience be so emotional this early, um, over this song has is, is been pretty overwhelming. Um, if anything, you know, the four of us, we just try to make sure we play it with as much passion as we can night after night and, and give it back to the fans. So it's been pretty remarkable. The crowd response to Get Up Live has been pretty amazing. Even before it was released as a single when we first put it in the set list, um, there was just this cool initial reaction that was very organic. We've been saying that a lot about this song, just in different interviews and things like that, that it's just been organic. Even when the album was released and you saw it um, on YouTube, YouTube Music, all of a sudden it just spiked above all the other, other songs from listens. And you see it in the audience, I think it's just something that people gravitate to because it's, um, it's no pun intended special and it's what's needed in this time. Any pre-show rituals I'd like to talk about? Yeah. Talk about them. The secret, sacred knowledge that you have to join us for to find out. Just got done doing one of them uh, as Sanjay, who's videoing this, is leaning on the massage table. Uh, there you go. I just uh, I get a massage before every show. Uh, it helps me relax. We work out earlier in the day, so it kind of helps get rid of that tightness from working out. Um, we. Uh, we kind of all, the four of us, that's kind of like the, like, it's weird. We all get along better than most bands I've ever hung out with. But the four of us aren't really together all day unless we're, we do a meet greet, work out together, those times we're together. But then after that, we kind of all split a little bit. And then you do 45 minutes to an hour before the show is when we're all kind of together. And so it's normally just us. And a couple crew people can come in, you know, Will allow you, Sanjay, obviously, can come in, uh, John, Matt, and Mary Jo. Other than that, nobody really comes to the rest of the time. We huddle, we always do our huddle before we go on stage with, the, with, with just the band and, and um, you know, I think that's kind of been out there, I think some, some stuff's out there of us doing that. And then uh, probably my favorite pre-show ritual though is when we go around all the crew members that were there are going to be on deck with us that night and we always give them knuckles and tell them to have a great show and you kind of have an individual ritual with each person. Um, and we do that during the loud song before we go on. And I, I don't ever see any other bands do that. And I think it creates this camaraderie and, and we already have. We already have a huge amount of camaraderie with our crew. Uh, we have guys that have been with us for 12 years. And uh, so it's just kind of a way to show love for each other before we go on. Because it's not just the four of us up there. It's an army of people that are making that show happen. And their job is just as important as my job is. So. Um, that's probably my favorite thing, my favorite pre-show. Uh, there's doo doo time, which is a bunch of the guys do, which is uh, I'm just gonna I'm actually not even disappointed because it, it sounds funnier. I've got to say doo doo time. Doo doo time is pre-show ritual number one. Uh, 
Doo Doo Time evolved over years. Um, I won't even go into explaining what it is. It's just called Doo Doo Time. It has nothing to do with DCs. Nothing to do with DCs at all. Doo Doo Time. <laughs> what Doo Doo Time is this? Uh, one hour out, uh, the core crew comes in to the dressing room with the band. This does not matter where we are. It doesn't matter the city, it doesn't matter the country, it doesn't matter the venue. This has to be done one hour before we hit the deck. Everybody gets a beer or a water or a soda, whatever your drink of choice is, and it is then given to that person, uh, usually by Sparky, who is Zach's uh, guitar tech and has been with Zach for eight years. Um, Got to understand something too, the, the core crew here are the ones that do this and it's always a lot more powerful when the family does it. But anyone is invited to do it, but there are some rules. If you're with us again later on down the line and you don't show up to do do an hour out, you're out of doo-doo forever. It doesn't work that way. If you miss the time, that's on you. Anyhow, everyone gets in a circle. They all take a deep breath. Barry Kirch counts it, three, two, one, and everyone screams at the top of their lungs, do, do, do. I know it sounds silly and almost like it is a urban legend of some sort. This actually happens. Grown men scream at the top of their lungs in order to literally try to pass out and see doo-doo stars. Upon the last yell of the doo-doo, Everyone cheers each other with kind of a funky look, you know, and you have to finish your beer, water, soda, whatever you're drinking uh, before you leave the room, and uh, that's duty time. Three, two, gotcha. Yeah. 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 One. Yeah. Yeah. You might say I'm a little intense. I'm on the bright side of being hell bent. Days off. What do I like to do on days off? There's a few things that I like to do on a day off. Good food. If I can find some place that is local, I go eat there. Local beers. I can find them. I like to find a cool bar with some cool beers or find like a hidden speakeasy somewhere in the evening. That's a lot of fun. If you're in a place that has history, that's what I want to experience. Go to a museum, go to a state park, uh, just walk around a city if you're lucky enough to be in a city like New Orleans or if you're overseas and in a city with lots of just visual history. Those are the things I enjoy to do. Um, it's, you gotta find something out here because it can, get, it can become very Groundhog Day and very um, overwhelmingly small see the whole world, so you have to get out there and actually do things. <laughs> I'm, what do I like to do on my days off? I am the wrong person to ask about this. You know, days off are spent, uh, you know, I'm, I'm lame. It's just, let's just be real about it. I've got no life outside of that stage up there. Um, so the days off are actually very important for me. Um, because what I try to do is not talk on the days off. That doesn't always happen. I'm always emailing and texting and doing what I need to do. There's always some form of business or something that I need to have my attention to. Um, I'm terrible at writing emails too because I'm a very vocal person so it kind of makes it a little difficult. I can't write novels uh, you know, because I have to I have a, I have to have a one-on-one -on -one with people. Um, here lately, what I've been trying to do is, you know, if there's movies on LodgeNet, I'll watch a movie, or, you know, I've also been drawing a bunch of designs for the new staging for what's going to be happening in 2019. Um, I don't really have very many hobbies. The three guys that I work with, they're always trying to get me to find a hobby of some sort. But um, in the on the days off, uh, because we live in a technologically advanced uh, world now, it does help me because my son and I will FaceTime each other. We try to make sure that that's uh, on a daily, but sometimes we're not able to do it. So I will definitely try to spend as much time as I can with him on FaceTime if I'm not 
you know, in front of him, you know, physically, or he's not out here on the road. Um, I gotta be honest, you know, my brain doesn't really shut off in regards to everything that is shined down. So, I mean, maybe one day I'll, uh, I'll start a book club.